Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining me as we continue our theme on the serenity prayer, how to have peace when your life is going to pieces. And our foundational scripture for this study this week is Psalm 46, verse 10, uh, where we find these words. Let go of your concerns. <laughs> Let go of your concerns. Then you will know that I am God. I rule the nations and I rule the earth. Yesterday, uh, we talked about the two extremes of how we respond to our troubles, to um, the, the, the issues that we face in life. Things, and we, we talked about how sometimes we are control freaks and we go overboard trying to control it. I'm going to have my way. And then the other extreme is a sense of passivity where I, I, I just say, well, I'm not going to even try. I give up. I, I surrender and I feel sorry for myself. Neither of those two extremes is the answer to life's challenges and troubles. The answer is there are some things that we cannot change. We cannot control. And those things that we cannot control, don't have a pity party. Don't work hard saying, I'm going to control it. I'm going to get this under control because you want. Instead, we talked about surrender. And let me tell you what the word surrender is. In fact, the word surrender is, is found, even though it's not, it does not use the word, it's, it's basically the same concept. And that's why we're using Psalm 46, verse 10. In verse 10, the first two words tell us what surrender is. Surrender is let go. That's what it means. It means to what you're holding on to, you let go and you give it up and to God. And the path, listen to me, the path to peace is surrender. Letting go of your past. Letting go of the worries in your future and, your, and letting go of the challenges that you have today that you can't do anything about. Many of us are angry with some people who hurt us years ago and they're no longer in our life. Let it go. Many of us are disappointed because our parents were not there for us the way we think our parents should be. And there's nothing you can do about it because guess what? Your mother may be dead or your father may be dead, but you're still holding on to something that happened 25, 30 years ago. Let it go. Somebody abused you. Somebody sexually molested you. And this happens not only to women, believe me, men, young boys get sexually molested too. And the person's off the scene. There's nothing you can do about it. What are you going to do? Hold it, harbor it, you know, just keep nursing it and rehearsing it, nursing it and cursing it and rehearsing it, nursing it, cursing it and rehearsing it. It's like drinking poison, expecting the person who hurt you to die. You drink the pearl poison, you're the one that suffers from it. Because bitterness is a cancer that mars the container. So what we have to do is let it go. Now, how can I tell when I have not let something go? Here's the number one sign when you know that you've not let something go. One word, here it is. I'm wrote. Here it is. Wary. <laughs> Wary. Stewing without doing. Wary. And when you're worried about something, that means you have not let it go. And let me tell you what the Bible says worry is. The Bible teaches that worry is a sin. It's a sin. It's a respectable sin. We think it's a misdemeanor, but it's not a misdemeanor. It's a felony. All sins are felonies. And, and sin is simply doing anything that God says do not do. And the thing about worry is, is that many of us are good worries. We're professional worries. Worry, worry can have a very active imagination. We can, uh, we can play that, you know, the what if game. What if I lose my job? What if I have a stroke? What if I can't pay my bills? What if, what if, what if, what if? Well, God doesn't want us to worry because as the serenity prayer says, God wants, God wants us to give, pray for daily bread and go back to the serenity prayer itself. If you go back to the serenity prayer itself, there's a part of the serenity prayer that says, uh, the latter part says living one day at a time. So you shouldn't be anxious about tomorrow because this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made living one day at a time. And we're told not to worry. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, 
He says, this is why I tell you uh, not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly father feeds them and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries at a single moment stop here to your life? Answer, no but they can take away from your life and worry does take away from your life. Next verse, look at what it says. Verse 28 says, and why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. Verse 30, and, it, and if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers, that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. What do you have? What do you have? Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will I eat? What will I drink? What will I wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Which is to say that instead of projecting about what's going to happen in the future, uh, the serenity prayer, and Jesus says, just deal with with today. I love the poem, and let me read it to you about the robin talking to the sparrow. And this is what it says. Said the robin to the sparrow, I'd really like to know why those anxious human creatures rush and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, I think it may be that they have no loving father such as cares for you and me. Since you know God cares for you, surrender all of your worries and concerns to God. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. And uh, help us uh, to truly surrender. And help us to remember that we know that we have not surrendered something when we're worrying about it. If we're going to pray, don't let us worry. But if we're going to worry, don't let us pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me. Another powerful point to ponder. Uh, look, if you don't have a church home, I uh, would like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. You can become a digital disciple. Email us here at uh, newstart at ssclab.org. Well, tonight we will have a study in the word, Bible study tonight. I hope you'll join us tonight for Bible study. And um, Miss Crystal Goodner Spratt will open us up at 6.30 with uh, the news, not only in our church, but the news of what's going on in our world. Uh, she's phenomenal. So join us at 6.30. We'll have worship at seven o'clock. I hope you'll be with us tonight. Look, but until we come together tonight, for the rest of the day, don't you forget in the midst of COVID-19 to stay safe and stay sane and always remember that God is in control. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tonight in Bible study.